on to show that music can help all subjects in school. And it keeps their interest in school, too, because they look forward to something that they're going to get maybe in the middle of their day or at the end of their day, something fun and exciting for them to do. Well, right, and, and, and for a teacher and, and for somebody else, it's just it's just different. It's just something to, to, to break up the monotony of lectures, right. of note taking, and, and, and it doesn't have to be uh, it doesn't have to be taking away from school it, when, when when the focus is to add to it. And and that's I think you bring up a great point uh, of just something like a little bit of, to to use a baseball terminology a change up or a curveball or something off speed just to just to keep people on balance to keep them on their toes and 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 you know not 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 to expect so much and to sort of be open to something new and, and different. Right. It's it's the same thing like an adult going to work every day in a schedule of, of whatever they do on a daily basis, and then all of a sudden somebody says, well, you know, let's have just like a little Halloween party. Everybody, you know, dress up and we'll, <laughs> we'll pick somebody that wins and you can get two movie tickets. Now, wouldn't that make your day fun? Absolutely. So, and I tell you, intuitively, intuitively, I think we know that music works. I mean, how did we all learn our ABCs? Well, we sang right. it. We so sang them. If Yes, if we just integrate those music, those, integrate music into curriculum through, you know, keeping a beat and sort of rapping it or singing it, those are the ways that help kids to really retain information. And we all know, I know for sure, that, I, you know, I'm not a traditional learner, so, and there are lots of kids who learn lots of different ways. So presenting information in a diverse way also helps kids um, you know, to to be able to retain it and, and take it forward. Um, so, yeah. And I would imagine that it would help special needs children as well. Absolutely. I, Even more so, I, I think. Yes. I, well, I'd say just all the way around music, throughout the lifespan, no matter what's going on in your life, music is going to help. Um, and we've seen that. It's very true of um, people with special needs. Uh, Music helps people who are nonverbal to be able to Mm -hmm. communicate. It helps people who have sensory issues to be able to process those sensory problems and be able to communicate for the first time with the world. Uh, I mean, we've really seen astounding things happen in... uh, with watching music therapy, filming music therapy in action, that it is it is so impressive. The, the thing with music and what makes it really so special is that music has a way of interacting with our brain that's unique to anything else in the world. And when music stimulates the brain, it has a way of rerouting information. So if there is a part of the brain that is not functioning properly or is somehow damaged, um, a traumatic brain injury, or maybe the the child is now manifesting autism, um, or the, there's some sort of problem there. There is a way for music to create new pathways to access things that, um, for example, communication or even motor skills that that were handicapped before. Now with music, there is that ability again. Also, on the special needs side, you know, I think people are accustomed to thinking of, of Down syndrome and autism, and, and, and those are especially, you know, prevalent in, in society. But what, what we have really also been struck by is how it affects or how it interacts with depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress syndrome. And those, we wouldn't consider people that suffer from those as, as special needs, but with the amount of prescription drug commercials that now inundate most major networks, news networks, uh, and network television, um, you know, it, it's obvious that there's a market for it and that people are, are there are a lot of people out there with, with these issues. And, and rather than, I think, poking fun at, at them or whatever the reasons are that they feel these ways, I, I think there's very real and interactive ways that don't involve drugs to, to be able to work with with individuals that suffer from these conditions. So we, we definitely have seen the incredible impact uh, of, of music therapy and music education with, with special needs children and adults, but we've also seen it just from, from t- neurotypical individuals as well. So it really is a cross-generational, cross-spectrum type of, of medicine, and, and that's something that we're excited to show everybody. Absolutely, and what I'm so impressed about with music therapy and with, you know, even getting back to YDEP, um, it's that the music therapists, they don't look at the disability. What they're trying to find is the ability in the person. In other words, 
from a music therapist perspective, and this is just such a beautiful perspective to have, but there is greatness in every single person. And music is the key to finding that greatness. And so, you know, they, they use music to help a child communicate. They use music to give them the ability to, to have free movement, to have freedom from their, um, from their stutter. And, and also, in, in that, during that music therapy session, they're also becoming musicians. I mean, they're doing this really hard work, but really they're playing and they're becoming musicians at the same time. I, I mean, I've just been so impressed with children who... They, they're not able to communicate verbally very well, and um, you know you can look at them and you can see that they they definitely have some challenges. But then they sit down at the piano and play by ear just some of the most amazing pieces, Elton John and Billy Joel. I, I mean, just I'm blown away by by what I've seen. And I tell you, like honestly, it's it's a little difficult for Michael and I sometimes in those situations for me holding the camera. I get choked up a little bit because it's just so beautiful. Um, She's being fair. I she cries like a baby. I mean, I've seen her. She has. I mean, there, we, we've been in some some really um, intimate settings where we both have reacted. But I, I mean, I, I you can ask any music therapist that, that has been with us in any sort of situation, because it's going to come out sooner or later. I might as well just be honest now. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, it, 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 it's striking. It's, it's amazing. It never, it never gets old to me. It never, or to Michelle. It just, it's something that every situation is different. You know, we've learned that every, everybody's brain reacts differently to music. It doesn't matter who we are. We're all like snowflakes, essentially. And, and we all take in music differently. So that means that every situation, whether it be music therapy, music education, or live music, it really has the potential to be different every, every time. And, and you and you see, you know, every every breakthrough for an individual, it's not necessarily a break, a, a new or different breakthrough. It's, it's or I'm sorry, the same breakthrough. It's it's new because it's that individual is a different person, and so you see that person totally get into their their taking their steps towards their goals, and and it and it's so different every single time, and and the mode to do it is different. The instruments aren't the same. The therapists all have to use different strategies. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it runs a gamut on my emotions. It works with my brain waves in a certain way, and it's, it's really one of the most – it's just rewarding. It's rewarding to see human beings uh, affect each other from, from human communication, and, and, and there's no magic to it. There's no energy balls floating around the room. There are no – you know, there's no, there's no prescription drugs that the therapists or the patients are interacting with um, from, from that standpoint. So it's just an organic process of music. The, the music therapist and the client and, and, and the goal of a non-musical goal being met. And, and, and that, to me, is one of the most beautiful things I will ever have witnessed in this life. Yeah, and that's funny you bring that up because I was going to ask you were there times you cried when you listened to someone's story. And, and I was going to say, Michael, it's okay for a man to cry, so fess up, and I'm glad you did. <laughs> <laughs> he embraces it. He definitely embraces it. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> what was the most unexpected thing to happen while on your journey? I think where we are right now. I mean, just in terms of, like, everything. I mean, just, yeah. like, being here talking with you. Um, I, I had never made a film before. Uh, we got in the car and said, let's see what people think about music therapy. Let's meet strangers and, and see what they think. Um, you know, let's let's invite ourselves into strangers' communities and and put a camera in their face and see if they'll, you know, let us uh, let us film them. You know, let's let's go out and 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 be bold. So I think that that has been yeah, just 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 the the, the reception from everybody uh, inviting us on on the radio shows, inviting us to to their homes, to their universities, to their shows, um, being a part of our live productions. I mean, it's all fed into each other, and, and so just people. Finding about finding out about our idea and and the way that they received it has, has just humbled us and 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 been a been a profound left a profound impact on our lives. Yes, and I before Michael approached me about this project, I actually didn't know anything about music therapy. So I learned I've learned a lot over this process. But I think also we kind of thought that we would maybe spend two months or three possibly doing yeah doing this film. Um, that we would just be on the road and we would capture everything that we need. But once we got started with it, that was it was abundantly apparent that we had a lot of work ahead of us. I mean, it 
it is much more than I could have ever imagined. And so, you know, our commitment to the project and the message that we want this film to convey, it has deepened so much that it takes a lot of time. It's going to take us some time to make sure that that, that message is conveyed properly. What does music do for each one of you? When you're oh happy, you're sad, whatever the occasion might be, what does it do for you? How does it make you feel? So I discovered music when I was quite young. Um, my mom had a little record player and a stack of uh, 45s, and I would just sit with that stack of 45s and lay them all out and put on the records and dance and dance and dance. And I loved it, loved it so, so much that throughout all of my life, that has been the way that whether it was a celebration or whether I was struggling with something, it would be that record or later the cassette or <laughs> later, you know, mm-hmm. the CD. Um, it would be that uh, that and dancing that would really help me to process um, whatever emotion I was feeling at the time and, and help me work through, you know, whatever problems or I would find solutions in those moments or at least peace. And so it really has meant a lot, a lot to me. Uh, for, for me, music has, I've been able to perform music and, and have it be a part of my life in, in different ways as well. And for me now, I, I think I've realized throughout my life, I've, I've chosen music because of how it makes me feel in, in certain situations. And I don't, it's always so hard to answer what my favorite band is or what my favorite song was because I think, I think what music has given me and, and where it's left the biggest impact and how I interact with it the best is, is taking how you construct a song and applying it to life in terms of how you can see where harmony is, in, in terms of taking a situation and you're dealing with people from different backgrounds, maybe it's different religious backgrounds or different political backgrounds, and if you pl- apply a harmony concept to it where there's balance and there's different levels and some people have certain roles that are that are bigger or less at different times where there's crescendos and decrescendos, sometimes there's a rest period, um, and, and sometimes, you know, it's, it's frantic and it's a little bit more staccato. Uh, you know, those those concepts I've actually tried to apply to, to how I built this business and how I interact with individuals because I do believe in more of a metaphorical sense of the of the word music in terms of how we all interact with each other because there is a rhythm in our chest as, as it's a heartbeat. There's a rhythm in mm-hmm. our bodies in terms of the central nervous system. We breathe and, with a rhythm. Sometimes I breathe or sometimes I just keep talking, but <laughs> usually I breathe. Uh, but, the, uh, but we but we as individuals can be these instruments in, in the world. And if we all are different instruments, we're not all going to play the same beat or the same rhythm. That's why syncopation exists. Uh, we're not all going to, you know, we all aren't going to want to play at the same speed or, or all of these other things, but because of the diversity of music and, 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 and how we can manipulate it and use it and change it and make it bigger or smaller, uh, I, I think there's a lot of concepts to take away from that to uh, to apply to everyday life. And, and so music has left an impact on me of, of actually how I approach uh, it, people, uh, the relationships that I build with businesses, and, and how, we, how we organize our shows. So I'd like to say that I live a very mellifluous life. And it, it's funny, I kind of have to say that I, I – grew up the same way as Michelle with music. And also, both of my grandparents were in bands. Um, My step-grandfather and my real grandfather were both in bands. So I grew up around music. And I think I just learned to love it from watching them play and how much joy it would give them. And we'd my one grandmother owned a tavern, so my grandfather's band would play in there, and we lived down the street, and my mom and dad would take us there sometimes when it was like a closed type of party. And uh, we would just have so much fun as kids. And, and so when I listen to music a lot of times, it reminds me of those days of happy times, you know, of people that are now gone on and that I can't be with anymore, but it brings back a lot of great memories. Absolutely, and I think I think music, you know, and and, that, and it's a beautiful. I love sharing these stories with people and listening to these stories. I know Michelle does too because mm-hmm. it, it's it's unique to you. I, I I we didn't live your life and and you haven't lived ours, so it's mm-hmm. awesome to just just be able to hear the, the the connections that we all make. None of them are better or worse or good or bad. They're mm-hmm. just they're what's important to us, and I think that's why music music 
doesn't, you know, music is more of a partnership in terms of its definition. One doesn't necessarily define the other. And, and that's what I think is so beautiful about it is it's so malleable that we can actually cultivate it to our own selves, our own lives, and our own environments. Right. 